Yo, what up, everybody? It's your man, Chuck Creek, my a.k.a. Jigsaw. I'm here with my guest co-host for the All yes, Hip Hop yes, Podcast, DJ, DJ Thorough, a.k.a. Thorough Zano, Bridge to the Streets. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. And we are here with a special guest on number seven of the All Hip Hop Podcast. We are here with a legend, God Tier MC, Pioneer, the Bronx is in the building. Yes. Hold Grand on. Master, Master. Cass. The greatest yes. of them all, even your mother for. Hey. Tell him about it. Tell him about it. <laughs> That's what's, what's up. What's good? What's good? Oh, man. man, thank you for gracing us at One World Studios, man. You already know. Love yeah. is love. If it's hip hop, I'm going to be there. Yeah, salute, salute. Now, is this the first time we've interviewed you? We've had to have interviewed you before, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah of definitely. Course. Don't yeah. ask me. <clears throat> Um, yeah, definitely. Don't ask me when, but for sure. You yeah, know, yeah, we've yeah. been TV before. Yeah. I don't know how in depth we right. got, but um, yeah, yeah. I'm here now. It's yeah, good. definitely, man. Now, first of all, man, I just want to say first, first things first, man, you are one of the coolest, most down to earth legends and pioneers I've ever met. I always say this because I don't know, man. You just always seem to have a good presence, good energy, always show love. You always show up in spots you wouldn't likely see you at. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? So I just want to say, man, I just salute you for being a great ambassador to the culture. For real. Nah, so we're giving you, them flowers. Is that yeah, we, 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 flower, we, flower we, time. We, right, we don't do flower time right okay, now. Okay, flower time. Yeah. Love okay. is love, man. I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm still so, so ingratiated. You know what I mean? Into this culture, I'm so, so much a part of everything that is hip hop that. Um, I mean, it's only natural for, for to see me in places like that because I'm not bigger than hip hop. Right. I never feel like I'm bigger than hip hop, no matter where it is. You know what I mean? It's the, the, as a matter of fact, <laughs> uh, the closer it is to, uh, you know, to the ground and to the streets, mm -hmm. the more you'll see me. Yeah, you know what no I mean? Doubt. You might not see me in Hollywood at the big parties and all that as yeah. much, but anything, you know, pure cultural hip hop, mm -hmm. you'll see me. Now, I want to um, start things off with hip-hop turning 50. Next yeah. year, it turns 50. There's a lot of celebrations coming up. Um, you were there at the beginning. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on the culture and how it's evolved? But just the fact that it's turning 50 seems just incredible. It, it is incredible, especially if you were there when it started. Um, uh, nobody knew that hip hop would grow to these proportions or last this long. Yeah. Okay. The first thing that they said to us, <laughs> first of all, you ain't gonna get nowhere doing that shit. Okay. Like you wasting your time. Right. All right. That shit'll be gone tomorrow. Yeah. And tomorrow never came. Right. So now we're on the 50th anniversary of the culture of hip hop next year, 2023. It's it's big, and um, mm -hmm. I feel I feel blessed to still be here. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm uh, I'll be 63. Wow! Mm -hmm. Congratulations! Yeah. All that's right, when hip hop turns um, 50, so yeah, I've been involved in the culture since its inception. Right. Dope, dope. Now, now, speaking of being involved in it since its inception, do you remember your first experience of that 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 day? You stumbled upon this culture we call hip hop. What was that like for you? Um, it was like a discovery. Like a discovery. Where were you at? Where street were you on? Where were you at? <laughs> details. Don't give, details. Me line, don't give me the line. Don't give me the line. But um, I, I grew up in the South Bronx okay. where a lot of early hip-hop cats come from. Um, but where, where I discovered hip-hop was actually at the place they called the birthplace of hip-hop, um, which is 1520 Cedric Sedgwick Avenue, okay. mm -hmm. you know, um, in the Bronx. I lived right up the street from Cedric Avenue. I right. lived on Failing Place. Okay. And... Um, when Cool Herc gave that infamous, you know, f jam, you know, down at at, at the um, Sedgwick Avenue, <clears throat> the neighborhood was buzzing about it, yeah. and I was a shorty. Right. Yeah. I was thirteen. Yeah. I wasn't going to parties like that. You know, our kids out here, they're 11. Mm -hmm. right. They out here yeah. drinking, smoking, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, know, yeah, chilling, yeah, right. popping mollies and shit. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I was 13, there wasn't no going out to no parties yet. But I saw all the older kids from the block leaving the block mm -hmm. everywhere. Yo, where y'all going? Where y'all going? We're going to Cool Herc party. We're going to Cool Herc party. So there was an awareness that there was some kind of movement that was, you know, drawing, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean, um, adolescence, you know, to to that energy. And I couldn't wait, you know, to, uh, to become a part of it. And I couldn't until uh, it came outside. Right. Gotcha. You know, when when, when um, right. the music came outside, 
and uh, the, when the hip hop came outside, I right. mean, you know what I mean? Because there was a difference. We all grew up going out to block parties. Mm-hmm. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, prior, when, uh, even our, our parents and, and ancestors went to block parties and shit. You know, that's why, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. <clears throat> But our interpretation of that energy, you know what I mean, was the B-Boys, was the, the sound system, was the DJs, and, right. and, and you know what I mean? And hip-hop was like a new revelation. So I just, I jumped on board. I mean, as soon mm-hmm. as I saw it, as soon as I got wind of it. Right. Yeah. Did you aspire to be a DJ first? Or was that what you saw first before the actual MCN? Yeah, because there were no MCs. Right, that's why. Yeah, yeah that's the part. Uh, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> the, the DJ was the yeah. MC. The DJ yeah. was the MC. You know what I mean? And the microphone was just used for announcements, okay. mm-hmm. basically. And then um, some DJs started to, you know, kind of embellish them, do um, a crowd participation, you know, back and forth with the audience and things like that. Right. That's what pretty much kicked off the rap, you know, because mm-hmm. rap is hip hop. Right, yeah. Okay, yeah. call and response on the microphone has always been a part of yeah. entertainment, whatever in, in whatever genre it is. Right. So the DJs take uh, on it just eventually led to our generation picking that ball up and actually saying rhymes and verses. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Next to the DJ, right. mm-hmm. as opposed to us being the DJ mm-hmm. and just talking to the crowd. Yeah. On that note. uh Hmm, I don't want to be controversial here, but um, why not? <laughs> I want to address. Well, you 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 gave me the alley oop. The idea of the first rapper, the first MC. Um, there's a few people that claim that, and I believe you're one of those, right? Is that correct? Not, Is not at all. Rock? Not at all. Well, well, Coke LaRock, Okay, let's just say it. Coke LaRock says he's the first MC. And I'm not, well, I'm I, in no position to... I, I, I've never referred to myself as the first oh, MC. Oh, okay, I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I feel like people, I... People do. Okay. People say, like, yo, if okay. it wasn't for him, it wouldn't be no hip-hop. Okay. Right. People say all kind of shit like that. Okay, gotcha. Okay? <clears throat> but I've never said that I was the first MC. I don't okay. consider myself the first MC. Okay. okay. I was MCing as a DJ. Got though. you. You okay. know what I mean? Before it was MCing. Got it. Okay. okay, I did what DJ Hollywood did. I did what gotcha. Eddie Chiba did, right. what Love Bug Starsky right. did, you know? Okay. Until, you know, MCing became a separate entity from DJing. Got right. it. Okay, got You know it. what I mean? And then when that happened, I just gravitated toward the mic. But my first inclination in being involved in hip-hop... Um, was to be a DJ. I was a, a B-boy at first. You yeah. know, I used to run with B-boys and dance at parties. And then when I saw a real party, I was like, now nah, fuck that dancing. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be a dancer. I want to make motherfuckers dance. Right, right. I want to be the reason why you dancing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I want to be a DJ. And so that was my aspiration in the beginning. Got you. I, I, speaking of B-boys, I I, um, I recall, like, I, I heard, I heard, I heard, um, you know that record, right? <laughs> Let me find out. You just installed that before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Speaking of B-Boys, um, I th- think there was a point in time where um, B-Boys didn't get the respect they deserved because a lot of, when you ask a girl to dance, you know, you can't, you there know, you it can't is. do that. Right? So, you must have seen my interviews, <laughs> yeah, right. okay? Like, so you wh- wh- what was that like, you know, trying to be a B-Boy but still talk to a girl back then? It was it was it was kind of the same as the struggle that as we were as DJs and MCs. It right. was like a battle against hip hop against everybody that thought it wasn't worth all that. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And it was like a, a all right, well, I'm a dance anyway. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you can't dance with a girl. All right, well, go ahead, bitch. I'm going over <laughs> here with my boys, and we gonna spin on the floor. Right. And because uh, it wasn't so much about girls, it wasn't a social dance. It was a yeah. dance. You know what I mean? Right. But girls didn't uh, like it though. Like, no, no. girls be like, oh, oh look at this one. Like, maybe, maybe at you know to look. You mm-hmm. know what I mean for a while, but they they considered it. They looked down on it as well. Wow. Cause you know, girls, they you know they get older before we do. They the same age as we are, but they're two years older in their mentality. mentality so right. you know, when we break dancing, they looking at it like that's childish or like mm. that's young, immature or whatever, right. and didn't embrace it <clears throat> yeah. until you saw it on on the screen. Right, gotcha. you know what I mean. Unless you was a one of them chicks in the street, and you was part of the culture. Right, right. you was a B girl, or you was you know what I mean. Or like you went to the jams. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. You was a fan of the culture. Then B boys was right. dope to you, but B boys play almost played out 
totally because of that because very of that. same mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a social dance, and right. girls mm-hmm. wasn't involved now, in the early days. Now, what, what, what era of B-Boy did you start at? Because for me, in my knowledge, I know about nigga twins. Um, mm. Jimmy D. That, r- that yeah. era. You from that era? I'm from that era. So this is before uh, legs, before before crazy. Yeah, legs. yeah, right. right before crazy G- legs. Jimmy D. Yeah, right. because Jimmy D. and Jimmy Lee and JoJo started Rock Steady Crew. Right. It's from around my block. Right. And um, when um, JoJo went away, Jimmy Lee got locked up. You know what I mean? I mean, not JoJo went away. Um, Jimmy D. went away. JoJo got locked up. I mean. Jimmy D went away. Jimmy Lee got locked up. So JoJo <laughs> was the surviving member, and Crazy Legs just picked up the ball and ran with it. Right, and you know what I mean. And that was the re-evolution right. of breaking. Right, because because what happened actually also, and you can you can tell me from incorrect, people had actually died out before it was even discovered outside of New York City. And then in '79, when I guess when when Jimmy D gave his Crazy Legs and he came and they kind of kind of revived it. Is that kind of safe to say? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Extent. What 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 brought about the acceptance of breaking was the commercialism of the culture. Right. Okay, when everybody saw it at one time, it was like, oh, shit. When people who never saw it before saw it and said, oh, shit. The right. first time the world saw breaking was in the movie Flashdance. Flash Dance. Right. And that wasn't until 1982. Right. Mm-hmm. So from between that time, you know, only the purest stayed involved, you know, with the break and the B boys moved on, became DJs right. or whatever, or got involved in another part of the culture or just dropped out, right. you know, altogether. And then there was a new wave of breakers. And then with the commercialism of it, first from Flashdance and then with the movies, Wild Style, mm-hmm. Breaking, B Street, um, it became viable again. Right. Hold on no, I wanna I wanna t- I wanna step back real quick. Can you like there's a lot of movies and, and narratives about the Bronx and how it was in the seventies. I don't want to put any words in your mouth, but what was it like for you in in that period of time? You know, you know, like was it what they say it was, or was it? I'll put it like this: I interviewed Flash, and he he kind of refuted what the prevailing story is about the Bronx. I mean, everybody has their own perspective. Yeah. Of, of, of the time, of the period, but there are facts mm-hmm. that you know, no matter how you perceive them, they are the facts. The yeah. fact was, is that the city, New York City was um, bankrupt, mm-hmm. they was um, corrupt, and they was every other motherfucking rupt you could <laughs> think of at that time. The, the stories about the buildings being burnt down, right. landlords, you know, ter- all that's true. Was a killer yeah. All Louisiana that's Sam? true. Oh, well, I was in 77. 77 that's okay. true. During the, the year of the blackout, which right. was just celebrated the 13th anniversary, wow. the 30th anniversary of the okay. 77 blackout. Right. Um, and all these things, you know, existed. Um, the the conditions at the schools, mm-hmm. um, which which uh, led to us trying to find an outlet for this energy, mm-hmm. this pent up energy that we couldn't get out from lack of instruments, lack of mm-hmm. programs, after school programs, and things like that, led us to our own devices. So, like mm-hmm. to quote um, Lord Jamar, we took the only thing in our house that made music and turned it into an instrument. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. mean that that turntable. Now wait a minute! I think I read that you got a little some equipment out the uh, the blackouts oh, yeah. when they happened. Yeah, Is yeah, we talked about that on my show. Okay, um, 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 today, um, this being the anniversary of the blackout, and I was reading a story where they said that how I had spoken about how the blackout enabled. Mm. a lot of people mm. to get involved in hip hop right. to become DJs and stuff because equipment which was astronomical before that if you was a young broke kid growing up in the ghetto mm-hmm. to buy amplifiers and speakers and all that shit was unimaginable yeah. but when the blackout happened and it was right in the midst of, of the early development of hip hop when you go to break into something you going to take what's valuable to you or what you think is going to be valuable to somebody else mm. okay so they rifled through them um equipment stores electronic stores all that looking for turntables and, mm. and speakers and stuff like that because that's what cats was doing out in the street mm. so it didn't make hip hop hip hop would still been hip hop had that blackout not happened mm-hmm. i was playing music in the park when the blackout mm-hmm. happened right 
Right, right. Okay. Right. Yeah, so wow. so I wasn't saying that hip hop because of the blackout hip hop flourished, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm just saying it enabled more people to have access to equipment than before. Yeah. And I just read something where Bambada said whoever said that is out of their mind. Right. That the blackout had nothing to do with hip hop. Right. Now he may have been misquoted, you know what I mean? Or yeah. the way they gave him the question, he made a it made it seem like um, so, so Grandmaster Cass says that um, because of the blackout, you know, hip hop became this and this and that. Now that's the wrong way to put it because I never said it like that. Right. Yeah. I said, even jokingly, I said there was a new wealth among mm-hmm. the people <laughs> after the blackout. After the blackout okay, right? and people that was, you know what I mean. You know, before you you could count how many DJs there were. Yeah. In the Bronx, you mm-hmm. knew. Uh, after the blackout, DJs was popping up all over the place. Okay? And that's a fucking fact. Right. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, real quick. Do you remember, because I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to records and all that. Do you remember what you were playing when that blackout happened as, when the park? Yeah, it's a song called um, Indiscreet. Indiscreet. Okay, by D.C. Uh, LaRue. D.C. LaRue. The B side of D.C. LaRue is called um, Wings of Love or something. Um, yeah. Something like that, right? Right. And when I put that shit, it's just said din 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 That's when the blackout started. So yeah, I remember the record. That's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always wanted to know what was he playing yeah. when that happened. Right? Yeah, and, then, and I'm like, cause, cause I'm looking at the other niggas. They have played already, and now it's my turn. So I, I forgot what the first record I played, but it was like an intro joint, and I was like, when I when I come when I bring this love joint in, nigga, it's a rap. Right, right. I'm like, yeah, okay, boom. <laughs> uh huh. Ready? Ten, 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 ten. Ah, love, love, love. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I panicked, yo, because the turntable stopped. I looked over at the other turntable. That one stopped. The mixer turned off. The amps clicked off one at a time. Click, 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 click. Everything was off. I looked over at them because I figured, oh, you done fucked up now. You done lost, nigga. Yeah. I looked over at them. They shit was off too. Right. And yeah. then the lights, the street lights, right. start going, going out. Up. Wow. One by one. It wasn't like, Boom, everything's right, right, dark. Right, right. It was like poof, 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 poof. It was like a fucking right, right, movie. Right, right. And shit just went off. And then when the last one went off, it was like a, oh shit, what the, what? Blackout! <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, they yeah. ran up out that park, man. <laughs> and I remember, I never forget this. There's a, two bodegas, one on this corner and one on that corner. And when that when them people start running up out that motherfucking park, you heard it like a roar, like blackout. Shoom, the <laughs> gates came down. Shoom, the gates, because they knew what was up. Yeah. And the next block was the Grand Concourse. Uh oh. What park was this? This was EBB Park. Um, what we call EBB Park. Um, Elizabeth Barrett Brown. It was the school right across the street, wow. one fifteen, and that's where we used to play basketball. That's where we filmed the Wild Style scene. Mm. Uh, oh, at so yeah, yeah the same same park right. that's where I, you know black wow. but wait what were you going to say you was going to say something about like the uh oh grand oh concourse. i said the next block was the yeah. grand concourse okay and the grand concourse is like the main thoroughfare in the bronx that right. connects north to south and divides east and west right. so it's like Everything along the Grand Concourse just leads you to something. And if you go that way, it's Fordham Road. If you go that, it's every shop and stuff. Uh, they just looted. I mean, from from the park that we was at all the way up to Fordham Road, everything got broken. Uh, that's crazy. Wow. Now, let's, you know, sort of get into your early beginnings of it, you know, being an MC. Now, did you look towards something or somebody, or, or did you just start, you know, writing? Nah, being... <clears throat> Being a DJ, like I said, I had a microphone first. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and when those announcements started to get embellished, you know, by other DJs, you go to Cool Herc Party, you'd be like, yo, it's yo, next week, we're going to see your face in the place at the PAL where we rock well and get on down to the depths of hell. 
Mm. Be like, oh shit, <laughs> yo, that shit was dope, yo, yo. I gotta, I gotta have like a line like that that I right, can right, say when, right. when, when I, when I finish my jam or when I. And basically, that's how the shit grew. Yeah, it started just from things like that, and okay. then niggas started to, you know, use um, television themes and and tunes to. You know, TV shows and commercials and jingles and stuff like that and incorporate those into the little sayings and this mm. and that. And that eventually grew the lines to, to you know, bars to verses mm -hmm. to rap yeah. as, as we know it today. But early rap, like I said, was crowd participation between you and the crowd until niggas start writing rhymes. Yeah. For me, um, it was... Partly natural. It was main, mostly natural. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was more natural uh, MC than I was a DJ. DJ, and I, I had to learn how to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? But writing rhymes or write, or being, you know, clever or shit, that's in me. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? Um, I used to write poetry as a kid. Mm -hmm. So writing a rhyme, what? When I heard the first nigga say a rhyme, I was like, oh, shit, all right. Watch this. Mm. And and it, it was on from there, yeah. and and so I've never, I think I like I found my niche. I've covered every element in hip hop. I did graffiti for a minute. I was I, I did the break dancing thing. I was a DJ, and then when I became an MC, I was still doing dual. You know, I was DJing and MCing. You know what I mean? Right. Doing my own parties and then or MCing with my group or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I always held fast to the turntables until I got down with the Cold Crush. Mm -hmm. Hey, well, they already had two DJs. Right. Gotcha. You know what I mean, they didn't need me DJing. They need me to whip these MCs into right. shape. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, I became a full time MC at that point, but never, never gave up my turntable. Right. Gotcha. So pretty much you participate in every element of hip hop. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And even the ones that have been added on, you know, mm -hmm. to the culture, you know, by different people. Um, the fifth element of hip hop is, you know, supposed to be the knowledge. Of hip hop, right. uh, beatboxing is of course another ele uh, element of hip hop. Fa style, uh -huh. I, I don't like to say fashion because uh -huh. fashion is dictated to us, uh -huh. but right. style is individual. Right, we all got our own you know sense mean? of style. You, you know, know what, what I'm is. saying? There it is. There it is. <laughs> so yeah, I pretty much you know been a part of any and every culture uh, element that has to do with the culture of hip hop. Right now when you uh, speaking on graffiti, what did you used to write? Oh, I wrote so many. I had so many different names. Um, uh, KJ, Boss, PJ, uh, um, Doc. That was my name because Dr. J was my idol. Okay. And how you talked about um, making your own Def Jam shirt. Yeah. I used to make my own Dr. J jersey nice. and I would draw the whole jersey on a tank top right, on right. a on a white tank top That's... and I draw the you <laughs> Yo. I, now, when I look back at it now <laughs> that shit must have looked so fucking corny <laughs> nah, but when man. I was a kid Look, I had the that stars was... going down. You remember the old Nets the jersey old, yeah, with Dr. That. J? Yeah. I had the stars going down. I had the shit coming this way and then the Nets 32 <laughs> Come on, man. Nigga. That's how, but that was the ingenuity, man. It didn't right. matter. It was probably fresh. Yeah, it, it definitely was. But you know, all that, all that, just you know, added to you know who mm -hmm. I am. Yeah, you know, as a hip hop person, it's like there's there's no stone that's been unturned as far as my participation and my appreciation mm -hmm. for all of the elements of hip hop. Got you. Um, I want to talk about. The competitive nature of of of, of the Bronx mm. and of the culture at that time. Uh, I've interviewed Shy Rock a couple times, and she talks about this too. You know, she just be like, "No, but you wasn't. You know, you know, you wasn't there though. Like, you know, she says that a lot. Yeah. Um, or we didn't see you, or and things of that nature. Uh, how was it for you? Was it competitive? Was it more camaraderie? What? Was it respect? What was it? It was it was very competitive. Yeah, hip hop was very competitive in the early days because it was about proving, you know, did you belong there? Yeah, like right. your legitimacy. You know, somebody could walk up to you all day. Yo, I, yo, you play ball? Yeah, I, yeah, I play ball. Oh, you nice? Your nigga want to see that? Right, right. right. He want to see that. <laughs> yeah. And then, and and if you don't show him that. 
then right. you can't even call yourself okay, a right. ball player. That nigga ain't no ball player. Nigga, yeah. ask anybody, ask him after that or see you after that. Nah, that nigga ain't no ball player. Right, right. And the same thing with hip hop. Right. You know what I mean, yo, that nigga's a DJ. He's a toy. That nigga's a toy. He ain't this and that. Woo, woo. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was, it was competitive like that, and you had to really stick to the fabric. You know, and, and earn your motherfucking stripes mm -hmm. with everybody. That's why people gravitated toward their own crew, because they didn't mm -hmm. need approval from somebody they don't know. Yeah. Like, that nigga say, fuck you. Yeah, all right, well, me and my niggas, we going to be over here. Right, that right. type of thing. And, and that's how different groups started gathering. And then once it became like this consortium, like the, this group over here, that crew over here, this crew over here, then it's like, okay, well, what crew is better than the other crew? Yeah. So there's always been a competitive thing. And when they started doing the battles and the MC conventions and the DJ conventions, um, yeah, that really kind of set off that, that competitive edge. And, and the crews wasn't kumbaya like niggas is supposed to be now mm. or became later on. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You know I mean, the, some of the, some of the biggest rivalries mm. in hip hop, mm. you know what I mean? Went, Today, we the best mm. of friends, right. you mm. know, what I mean? or started out. Right. As the best of friends. But yeah. because we was in a different crew, right. Right. I can't fuck with you. Mm. Fuck you and them niggas. Mm. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's how that was. Right. Now, speaking of that, I want to talk about a legendary battle. All right. Harlem World. All right. That's, Fan that would be us and the <laughs> Fantastic, Fantastic Five. Five. Yeah. One of the most epic battles yeah. you know, in hip-hop. <laughs> how did that even start? Like, why did you guys battle... Why? Why it, did, how did that start? It came from our our rivalry started because we were trying to um, fill in the void left by the Funky Four plus, plus one. one more mm -hmm. and the Furious Five. Okay. They were signed. They got signed to deals. They were on the road doing mm -hmm. shows. They was out of town. New York was left open. Like, mm -hmm. who's number one? Yeah, yeah. Who's number one now? Right. right. I mean, so we were vying for that spot. And the Fantastic Five had the notoriety because they were the L brothers before that. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they were already had juice and a name mm -hmm. in hip hop. Me as Casanova Fly I always struggled. It was always a you know what I mean? The only way I got by because of me, yeah, you know I mean that nigga Yo, his set might be bullshit, but that nigga could cut. Yeah, you know I mean, or yo, that nigga ain't got this and that, but yo, he got records. That nigga he got, got right. the, yeah, you know I mean, so it was always something that kept me. Where another nigga, he would have just he'd have been gone, right. you know, yeah. in obscurity. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like for me, I always, but once I got down with the group. I'm like, now this is going to be my vehicle. This is what I'm going to do that's going to make a, be, me competitive and make us competitive with everybody else out here. Cold so, Crush. Cold Crush cold Brothers. Mm -hmm. So we went, I gave up the DJing thing. We went in the lab, you know what I mean, for like a year practicing mm -hmm. and then came out ready to take that, that spot. Right. Um, Fantastic Five thought they had it automatic. So mm -hmm. when we came about, and they cut, there's two members of them come from my original crew. Okay. Mm. All right? Whip a Whip and Dada Ross started out in hip hop with me. Oh, okay. I mean, I sat in the lunchroom with them, like, you know, writing rhymes and shit like that. So, okay, I'm not worried about them. <laughs> Kev, you just got a big mouth and you spoiled. Mm -hmm. You ain't shit. Rob, you cool, but you can't fuck with me. And Ruby... Come on, knock it off. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, that was the mentality. Right. Their, their arrogance came from them already being, like, having juice or notoriety. They were known as pretty, the pretty boys. The pretty the boys. Pretty the pretty boys. boys. Right. You know, they had all the, the, you know, the fly shit, the right. new shit. You know, Whip and Dot got down with them and just added some, you know, some punch to, to their shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ruby was, all right, Puerto Rican dude with the curly hair. So, you know, they had a look. Right. But, um... They couldn't fuck with us. <laughs> I say I said that then. I say that to this day. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? They won that battle that night because of their popularity. You know what I mean? The, the fact that they were already on top. We was the blue collar niggas. Yeah. Right. They was the pretty boy. Right. We work. We work for hours. You know what right. I mean? So I think that came across that night. So even after the battle, they they won that night. But after that, they were never considered right. the best crew right. or out. Because once the niggas start listening to them tapes, hey, tape, that's the mm. I'm glad you went there. All right, you can't see right. no tuxedos on this tape, nigga. Right, right. You can't see who <laughs> light skin, who eyes is pretty. Right, mm -hmm. you can't see none of that shit on this tape. Right. Nigga. All you can do is hear. 
Yeah, you know mm-hmm. I mean, and from what they heard, that's what happened that's in hip hop. So that's where the, the, the changeover change. came, the earliest, and we kind of lost the battle but won the war. Right. Wow. I always wanted to know who came up with that actual name, the Cold Crush Brothers. Who came up with that? Tony Tone. Okay. I Remember believe Tony Tone. Tone. Yeah, for, uh, Tony Tone was a member of the Brothers Disco, right. which was uh, DJ Breakout and Marin and the right. Funky Four. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he left them to start his own crew, which was around DJ Charlie Chase, Puerto Rican DJ cutting up breaks, right. which was a novelty at that time. And um, Cold Crush. Cold Crush. Did y'all ever aspire to do albums? Like, y'all never really re- released a formal album. You know, we resisted um, the commercialism of hip-hop. We resisted, you know, making records mm-hmm. or being or, or running to try to make a record. Mm-hmm. Um, we had just really made it to the top of hip-hop in the street. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 81, that was our year. Like, after that battle, it was on and popping. Right. You know what I mean? 81, 82, all the way through 83. I mean, we we had two good years, you know what I mean, where we didn't need no record. Right. You know what I'm saying? We was playing with groups with records. They was opening up for us. Yeah. yeah, he said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah earlier, you, was, you, know, you were headlining. You, you had we no was record out, and you was the headliner. Exactly. Yeah. After a while, they was giving um, hip hop uh, MC conventions and just telling us, "Yo, just stay out. <laughs> Here, we'll pay y'all just to come, right. and then let them battle. Let the rest wow. of them out because they knew they knew what was going to happen." Right. Who are some of the people y'all went on tour with without a record deal? We never went on tour or did shows with. Because I think you did some of Rick James' New Edition. These two oh, oh, um, New stuff? Edition. I mean, right. New Edition. Um, all like the early R&B people that right. you saw involved in hip-hop, getting mm-hmm. involved in hip-hop. You know, Keep Sweat, you know, right. people like that. You know, but us, our, um, we never went on tour okay. like a traditional tour. Yeah. Right. Like like the Funky Four and, and Furious Five and... You know, Curtis Blow and them niggas, everybody. We never went on a tour bus together and went from one city to the next to? city. You never wanted to? Wanted to. Of course we oh, wanted okay. to. Right. We were never afforded the opportunity to do that. Okay. How about this? You, you were part of one, of, I would say, the first international hip-hop tour, the Wild Style tour. That, now that, I was going to come to that because <laughs> that was the first time, like, that right. we went on tour. tour. Okay. Right. Any kind of tour. Got you. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, we went to Japan. Right. Okay. After the movie Japan Wild Style, and we, exactly, we introduced Japan to the culture of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Now, the funny thing is, we was talking about you know the rivalry and the battle with the Fantastic. Um, the Fantastic Five was supposed to go to Japan. Right. Mm. They wasn't able to take both groups to Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like twenty five people that went but that's b-boys graffiti artists you know what i mean all that right. and um so i at the meeting you know their fearless leader waterbed kev <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> ran his mouth you know mouth though yo we want this man fuck them niggas we want this we want that we gotta have this we got they was like okay all right mm-hmm. all right Next day, I got a phone call. Yo, y'all want to go to Japan? I was like, hell yeah, we want to go to Japan. And so we wound up going instead of them. Wow. I mean, I think because Kev um, was trying to get down with the with the Furious Five at that time. Right. You remember he joined the Furious Five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they became the Furious Lovers? Yeah. Right. No, I don't remember that. Let me stop lying. Okay, no, well, I don't you remember need, that. You don't want to remember that part. Nope. <laughs> but... Yeah, so, I mean, he pretty much talked them out of going to Japan. So we wound up going, which I'm so glad about. I'm so happy, you know what I mean, that we right. got that opportunity to do that. And being the first people that yeah. that Japanese people saw, saw do right. hip-hop. And That's it's, it's crazy. interesting because if you go on YouTube right now, there's footage of that actual show. I don't Same know if you know. Word. Yeah, there is. There's footage, Fat Five Freddy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Easy B, you, Crazy Legs. There's yeah. footage gotta, of that actual show. That. I wrote I wrote yeah. Fat Five Freddy first lyrics. Say word. Yeah. Wow. I ain't, you, did you know that? I did know you that. know that? I I'm a know. ghost See? wrote. I'm, ghost, I'm a ghost writer, my nigga. Ghost writer. Nah, nah, oh, not, yeah. not, 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 his, not his record. Oh, okay. I mean, like what he was doing, the stuff he was performing in oh, Japan. Okay. 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 Yeah. You wrote, I remember. Yeah, he was rhyming. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. That's yeah. crazy. He had on a windbreaker. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Yeah, because yeah, me and my guy was talking. You are hip hop's first official ghostwriter. Did you know that? I mean, they say that. No, oh, you are. People say that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you if you dig deep enough, you'll Commercial. find I'm somebody. Hip hop. Com- look how many records, uh, rap records that were released in 1979, including Rappers to Life. Right, you're right. You know now, Melly, um, I'm sorry. The somebody message, wrote somebody, somebody wrote shit somebody on one the of the records. Was Melly Mel and Duke, Duke Booty. Duke, yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, I would say. Um, um, rappers delight that everybody. First of all, rappers delight came before the message, right? Though. But everybody that attributes yeah. rappers delight is what nationally is, um, exposed people to hip hop. Like, that, oh yeah, it's the song right. it's that the introduced song uh, that rap introduced, music in, to, yeah, to, to, to mainstream to world, America. To yeah, mm-hmm. that's the first time. That's how I like. That's the first record I heard. Like, mm-hmm. It was rappers delight. Yeah. And so by me, I'm like, okay, this is hip. This is what it is. I don't know anything else. You know what I mean? Right. So, what I mean by in my eyes, you were the first ghostwriter of. The song by that accident ex- that introduced the world to hip hop. Right. You know what I mean, so I don't know. Like, what, what? How do you feel about that? Because I know I know I, the story behind it, but how do you feel? About of course, it? I have mixed feelings about <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> of course, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, on the one hand, I was never, you know, compensated. I, I never received a dime from Rappers Delight. I wrote a third of it, mm-hmm. right? Pretty much. Um, so that's that's a down that's a downer pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah. On the other hand, historically, um, my lyrics are part of the song that introduced hip hop to America. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Whether you know I said I wrote them or not. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean, I do. Yeah. And uh, I think there's a big, you know, a large population of the hip hop culture that knows as well. Right. It's been documented. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So yeah. I can take a little, you know, satisfaction. Out of just being connected right. to the song. I mean, it's, it's been more than documented. In fact, Jay Z said he's gonna pay niggas back for what they did to you. No, no, what he said was. What he said was. What he said was. Overcharging. He gonna overcharge listen, niggas for what they did, for what they did to the cold crush. He he's compensating himself. Exactly. This is this is this is what you call this is what you call robbing from the rich in the name of the poor right, right. okay see Robin Hood he robbed from the rich to give to the poor okay right, right. okay, okay so Jay Z he, he's robbing from the rich in the name <laughs> of the poor right. everybody y'all fucked over y'all gonna have to right. give me extra money right. nigga cause you oh, fucked so, so many people over so nigga. Jay never came to you and said here you go bro no he hell no oh, oh, Jay, Jay, Jay. Jay 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 he ain't never sent no on, check Jay. Now. come on Jay hook us yeah. up hook Kaz up hook Chuck up hook Thurl up hook us all up you billionaire status now man that's why I'm wearing white right now because Jay was in the Hamptons. I didn't get my I mean, invite. I appreciate your spirit because you, I can see where someone, from your point of view, could be bitter, angry, frustrated. I, I mean, I, I had my my bitter and my angry, uh, you know, time yeah. and points. Yeah. The thing is, man, I, I just didn't know enough to be angry. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know enough to be angry. I wasn't. I wasn't mad enough. Yeah. I wasn't angry enough. I was like, all right, fuck it. I got more rhymes. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, I'm on this cold crush shit. Fuck them. Yeah. Right. you know what I mean. I'm. I'm I, I, it, it never really dawned on me the enormity and, and, and how you know what else came with it. We ain't know about publishing and, mm-hmm. and right. you know what I mean. And, and even they wasn't getting no bread because they was robbing them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Did they you? was robbing Hank and and, and G and, yeah. and, and and um and Mike. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So even they wasn't getting what they had, what what, what they were supposed to get. Right. Did you no ever, artists on that label got paid the way they were supposed lying. to get paid. You know, oh, and man. each and every one of them I know. So yeah. I'm not just talking shit. I'm right, just, right. <laughs> no, 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 that, no, that is what it was. But I'm saying at the end of the day, I mean, the despite the negativity. The fact that there was a Sugar Hill Records at all, okay, mm-hmm. was a big motherfucking um, assistance to this to this right. thing called hip hop. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? You, uh, call it how you want to call it. Facts is facts is facts. But had they not been there, and I always like to say when people say, "Yo, if it wasn't for you, I would, nigga, if it wasn't for me, it would have been for somebody else." Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, so I don't want to put them in a position like if if they didn't make rappers delight, you know. Right. Hip hop never would have jumped. Yeah, it would have jumped off somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe somebody else record would have been the one that kind of crossed over, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. 
It was theirs. Right. And they created a platform for uh, young black hip hoppers to mm-hmm. jump on board and feel special, to travel, mm-hmm. to make records. I mean, even, they, even though they didn't get what they had coming, they could have been in the streets. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? We could have ended up any old way. So that was lessons learned. But, hey, people became legends behind that shit. Did you ever confront Big Bang Hank did, or or anyone else at all? Nah. No, I didn't. And it wasn't until later, much later, you know, that, that I even, you know, confronted him about it. And it wasn't in a... Like a, a derogatory way, a mm-hmm. negative way. It was like, yo, it was like, what's up, man? Like, yeah, my nigga, like, right, the nigga ain't had no answers for me, man. Right, right. He couldn't even really look me in the eye. He couldn't, you know what I mean? Because he know he fucked up. Like, you know you fucked up, man. You know you fucked up. And and he knew he <laughs> fucked up. And I'm not the only person he hears it from. Right. Okay, there was a time if the Sugar Hill play, gang played in New York. Mm. Motherfucker, there's a there's a, a a bunch of people right in front. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> fuck y'all! This and that. Like there were certain places where they were playing in the city. Like you know what I mean? And, yo, that's cash shit. You know what I mean? And they from Jersey too, by the from way. Jersey? Yeah, because yo, G didn't get it. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, I, we we laugh about it all the time. Master G, you didn't get it. He's like, why these niggas is, why they don't love us here? Right. What are they talking about? Right. You know what I mean? They didn't know that Hank Hank shit wasn't wasn't his own. Yeah. Right. Until yeah. like later, later on. Yeah. And people that did know wasn't trying to tell them that. You know what right. I mean? Right. They were trying to keep that from them. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was right there in the lyrics in the Grand Master of the Three MCs. Going, going yeah, hello. Like, one and one is two, my nigga. Right, so how did, like, it's right and, there. And, 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 and you know sense. what? Let me tell you something that, you know, and this is that relative to this. When I first started MCing, right, and I was a DJ, but when I first called myself saying rhymes on the mic, I was saying what I heard. Right. Uh-huh. I heard. And whenever I would hear something, I would make up my own thing off of that thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I would never, I would never, what, something happened at me, and I said somebody's rhyme, and when I realized I said it, I was fucking mortified. I said, am, I'm actually saying somebody's name? Mm-hmm. I was saying Love Bug name. Right, right, right. right. You remember when Love Bug used to say, I'm the L O V E B U G, this and this and that, this, this and that. I got more rhymes than Muhammad Ali Ali. and this, this. That was like a standard rhyme. If you didn't if you didn't rhyme or you just wanted to say a rhyme, that's what the fuck you said. Right, right. And when I realized I was saying I'm the L O V E B Uh, and and I'm saying I'm I was like, oh shit. Never again. Right. Right. Never again. This was like early on when it, like me and, you know, nobody really heard this shit. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But I I heard it. Yeah. And and that just, I mean, my standards as far as writing, as far as the rules of being an MC, what you're doing, what you don't know, it was established right there on yeah. that day. Right. So for somebody years later to come back and take my rhyme and use my name and say uh-huh. my name in it consciously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that not bother them. Right. You could tell they wasn't no fucking MC. There was yeah. no MC. That's a fact. Right. Yo, I wanted to talk about Melly Mel. Y'all have a a great friendship, right? Yeah, man. That's my yeah. bro. That's my tag team yeah. partner. Yeah. We like Hawk and Animal, my yeah. nigga. Yeah. I saw y'all in the... Um, you know the uh, DC. Uh, I'm sorry, the National Hip Hop Museum uh-huh. performance a couple years ago. Yeah, it was crazy. I taped the whole show on my phone. My phone is full right now. I'm going through stuff to delete, and I'm like, yo, I'm not deleting that. Okay. You gotta upload that to your computer. <laughs> yeah, I know, it. man. I, I'm, I'm a driver. So. Yeah, I'm struggling right now. But yeah, but um, talk about that. Like, I almost felt like y'all would be almost rivals because. Of the period in which y'all both came up. Mel, Mel is part of that conversation we were having earlier about, you know, we didn't, you know, every, every crew was to their, to their self. And, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It wasn't no kumbaya, like, yeah, yeah. Man, we all, nah, man, like, the fuck them niggas over there, <laughs> them niggas over there. And out of all the crews, Mel and them were like the maturest, mm-hmm. okay? They were the old, I don't know if they were, they wasn't the oldest because I'm older than Mel. Mm-hmm. Oh, just one year. But mostly every, everybody else with me is young. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Young cats. And just them as a group kind of, you know, 
Mel with the deep voice, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Cowboy, that nigga wasn't in play with nobody. You know, Scorpio was like, on some fuck you, you know, like mm -hmm. flip his head on you type <laughs> shit, you know what I mean? So they had this fucking persona and it was it was about trying to trying to get that, trying to be that, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Try to or or be somewhere close to that or be in that realm. Um but did we had a we had a um I me personally, let's 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 take it to me. Me, I had um damn, what do you call it? I had the utmost respect for the group, uh -huh. for the Furious Five, and especially for Mel uh -huh. as their leader. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I knew who I was as far as an MC is concerned. And I knew the people around me. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, this is my band. You know, he down with me. He good. He all right. But he ain't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mel was that nigga. I said, now that nigga's good. Yeah. Now that nigga. If anybody is good as me or better than wow. me, mm. it's that nigga that right there. Yeah. Wow. yeah, yeah. So he set a standard for me that I would never go under. I can't go under that motherfucking standard right yeah. there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And nobody else could match it. Right. Nobody else yeah. could match it. So to this day, you know, that's our motherfucking kinship. Yeah. You know, he's in the Grammy. You know, he won the Grammys and he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and he this and this and that. But... As far as hip hop is concerned, ain't nobody, ain't no two niggas more connected on on that level than me and him. Yeah, yeah. right. That show was awesome. Right. Let, let's. Uh, I want to go here for a second. It's um, church. When we, I didn't make the message, he did. But when we perform that shit together, that shit is like church. Yeah, right. definitely. Right. Definitely. I want to talk about the connection. There was an era where it was punk rap, punk rock, excuse mm. me, and, and 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 rap, where you had. Hip hoppers or whatever, dressing like punk rockers. In fact, you guys did a record called Punk Rock Rap. Punk Rock Rap, right. yeah. And then you yeah. had the, 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 you know, the beads and the wild hair. And what was that? Like, wh wh why was that? Like, what was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about well, that? Say it like you want to say it. What the hell was going on? What the fuck was wrong with y'all? What the hell was going on? Um, I would look, and if you want to blame somebody, blame the motherfucking Furious Five, okay? <laughs> Because, like I said, they, they, they were the torchbearers. Right. They were the trendsetters. Okay. You know what I mean? They was the niggas in lead, and, and if you, you if they did it, it was like, okay, you, must, you better be able to do that, nigga. Right, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So it was also a time we had an excuse. We did a song called Punk Rock Rap. Right. Because the energy coming from downtown was that rebellion against... Us, the standard rock music and rock bands at that time, and that was punk rock. Right. And uh, hip hop was the rebellion against disco. disco right. right. It was the it was the youth movement against disco, and those energies kind of met at some point. So we were trying to put them together in the song punk rock rap. Right. So mm -hmm. our when you saw us dressing with the leather and the, and the feathers and the spikes, spikes. <laughs> part of that was from the Furious Five, okay. and then part of that was the punk rock. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Trying to merge that punk rock, you know, um, mentality with right. the hip hop mentality. So, we went left. I know, we went to the left. left. Now, now about left. what year was this? Now let's give it context. What was that, about 82? 82. 82. 82. 82. Yeah, 82. It started. It started. Yeah, at eighty. Pretty in the eighty one, eighty two. Because yeah. the Furious Five had come home right. from tour. Yeah, and they had been on tour with Cameo. Mm. With Rick James, <laughs> with the oh, yeah. Barcades. So you, see their yeah, right. you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. they see what stars dress like. Yep. They mm -hmm. see what like real superstar entertainers right. dress like. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and that's also why I respected them so much, especially Mel, because Mel always had the mentality we're bigger than the audiences. Yeah. And we're supposed to appear that way and we're supposed to come off that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Early hip hop MC stood on the floor. Yeah. Next right. to the DJ. Right. 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 Mel and them were the first niggas to get up on a stage, mm. get on the table, elevate themselves. Wow. Right. That's when the, the MC became the focal point in hip hop. Mm. Right. So on that note, <laughs> so up next comes Run DMC. Yep. Yep. And the, the ushering of the, <laughs> the changing of the guard. Right. Right. Hold on. What's that? Oh. Changing of the guards. Right. Mm. So yeah. So next up comes Run DMC, and well, let me let me ask you: 
how what was your sentiment when Run DMC came through? Um, I was like, it's over now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Yeah. It's, it's a rizzle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were. I mean, if you thought that we were resistant to each other in our generation, mm-hmm. imagine the next generation coming in yeah. and blowing up. Right. You know what I mean? It just signaled the end of our era and the beginning of the next to me. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And I wasn't mad at them. I I, I didn't think... I appreciated them, but I wasn't, like, happy that they was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At first. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like, because these niggas si- signal the end of our era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. I, I'll never forget, too, Run DMC. I, there was a big thing I used to I still have it somewhere. It's, it's about this big. I, I don't know how I got it. It's a tour thing or something. And it said, we stomp mud holes in those old heads. Um, that? Yeah, it was a long wow. thing. It was a long, long poem type right. of thing, and I, I, don't, I don't think they meant it literally. Right. I never took it literally, but okay. it just it seemed like they was really trying to. I would, I would have. I mean, because <clears throat> anytime any MC any made any reference to an old school MC or anything like that, I take that shit personally. Yeah. I used to take that shit personally, mm-hmm. okay? Because you you could be talking about me, nigga. You're making a general statement about old school niggas or whatever. Right. I know you ain't talking about me. Yeah. All right? Because yeah. I'm the one old school nigga that you can't fuck with. Yeah. You know I mean, you, we, we, don't even, we don't even play like that. But I don't, you know, but this, this, we don't even take it that serious yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know I, mean? It's, I, guess, I, I guess what I'm saying is um, intentionally it seemed as though Run DMC was... The, I mean, I always consider them the beginning of the new new school. That same thing yeah. I just said. Right. Exactly. Yeah. They signaled the end of our era and the beginning of theirs. Yeah. And uh, the same thing with LL coming in. Yep. You know, because they're a group. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's two in it. And, but this nigga's by himself. And this nigga is single-handedly coming in yeah. and, be, and, re, and, re, and replacing. Like, niggas, like, it, it's a lot to take. Yeah. Not because they winning. But because they signal you losing. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. They're stopping you from being, you know what I mean? Because trust, new generation come in. It's like in with the in with, out with the old, in with, in with the new. new. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Now, if we could coexist, all right, cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? But, but, but we knew the different politics were coming into play. You know what I mean? Different decision makers mm-hmm. were coming in. Different promoters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can get, get we can still getting booked by Arthur Armstrong that owned the Ecstasy Garage in the Bronx. Right. Mm. Fuck out of here! Yeah. Armstrong's seventy some years old. Right? You know what I mean? Right. It's time. The Russell Simmons is coming in. The Larry Smiths is coming right. in. The, the, the this and this and that. You know what I mean? The generation of people that went to college and shit and no business and know how to start or, or know how to do. You know. That's the people that really took hip hop to the next level. Right. For the record, I asked DMC a similar question, and he said Rakim was for, for him. And I asked Rakim, and he said NWA, NWA was what it was for him. So he's, right, so each he generation, generation he has right. a point, point where they know. Yeah. Okay, my my generation has come yeah, to a DMC to an said when I heard Rakim, it's a rap. It's a rap. And when Rakim heard NWA, he, he was like, rap. what what can I do? I'm not that. Type of thing. Right, I can't right. do that. I can't. Nothing I can do. Like, right. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that's interesting. That, yeah. I, that I didn't know. I'm not saying they stopped or anything. They right. they obviously kept going. Right. But it's crazy because DMC is one of the self proclaimed biggest Cold Crush fan in the he world. Is. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he is. Biggest. Yep. He is. Trust me. I, I, He's DMC because I'm GMC. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of shit. Literally. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, Literally. right, right. And speaking of which, do you have an endorsement with um, car companies? Uh, with, no. Because I noticed you had a, a GMC. I do. I do right. have a GMC. <laughs> you got to get, your um, you get an endorsement. What's going on with that? I got a GMC. Are you driving a car license because plate, of that? You know what I mean? Right. Uh, GMC on everything, man. That's I, crazy. I, 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 I learned the value of branding. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and, and and promoting yourself, and if nobody else do, you better promote your goddamn self. Mm-hmm. And I come from the era of you know, putting fucking letters on your T-shirt with right. your name and shit on it. You know what I mean? I used to have six or seven girls from my high school 
all with T-shirts with my name on them. Right. We should go to jams, walk yeah, down the street. The hey, everybody say Casanova fly. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. I mean, hey, I, I made my name in these motherfucking right. streets. You know what I mean? And then when you like, well, who's that? I showed you who was that. Then he's like, oh shit, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, right. and to this day, I just kept keep that mentality. And during the pandemic. Uh-uh. Niggas had plenty of time to think and come up with things, you know, alternative ways, you know, to not only make money but to be creative, yeah. you know, because if you're a creative person, you know, you need an outlet for that shit. That uh-huh. shit sit in you. It's uh-huh. like you you'll yeah. go bananas because you feel like you need to be doing something. So. You know, I started branding, you know, doing your GMC this, GMC. I got mugs. I got slippers. You know what I mean? T-shirts, hats. Right. I, my, my name is on everything I own. Right. DJ Talk, real quick. If you took... No, yeah, I was trying to tell you it was blocking up for a little when you Oh, my God. My God. My God. My God. My God. My bad. Oh, Deep. wait. Let's speak. Speaking of branding, you, you have your own weed line as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got a, a new strain, uh, my own strain of weed. It's called Casanova Fly, mm. um, basically. And um, I'm, I'm a connoisseur. I'm, a, I'm an advocate mm-hmm. and all of that. And um, uh, my man from the Lifted Shop in D.C., uh, who also uh, um, created a strain for DOS FX, mm-hmm. um, Onyx, Onyx. Mm-hmm. Has a strain. Sugar Hill uh, gang have a strain as well. And uh, Rakim is coming out what? Okay. with a strain um, mm. soon as well. So, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's just one of the things that, you know, one of the seeds I planted before the pandemic that once everything opened back up, grew to fruition. So, so. Yeah. Right. Now, um, I'm a DJ. Um, my favorite um, record is to play on breakbeats. Mine, mine so too. So if you turn around, mine you see too. those crates behind you? You see those mini crates right there? We're going to dig in the crates real quick. Right? Oh, <laughs> so you got to... <laughs> You see those crates? So listen, my favorite break beat is Juice, Catch a Groove. Uh-huh. All right? Um, I want to know your top five break beats that you like. Give It Up, Turn It Loose. Okay. All right, by James, James Brown. James Brown. Okay, Just Begun by Jimmy, Jimmy Castle Castle. Bunch. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Dance to the Drummer's Beat by Herman, Herman Kelly and Life. Mm-hmm. Um, get You Some. By Melvin Sparks. Melvin Sparks. Woo. And um, damn, so, so many, so many. These are all I have rocks. to say, uh, you know, the Bells, the Bells. Uh, Bob James. Bob James. Uh, yeah. Mardi Gras. Take me Mardi to the Mardi Gras. Take right. me to the Mardi That's Gras. Uh, uh, right. Peter Piper. Now, if, if you can only do, I need you to do me one favor. I know I know DJs don't like to give up records. I don't know if you're still on that. You know, a lot of people should cover up the records. Nah, it's all good. You know, I used to do that too. You know Because I mean? niggas did it to right, me. You gotta, I, need so, you, right. I, mean, mm-hmm. I need you to tell me this record. I saw you at the Tools of War playing. You trying uh-huh. to get one of his secret no, records? No, because I mean, no, he's going to know exactly what I'm talking okay. about. Because to this day, I don't know this damn record. Um, he was at the Tools of War on 35th Street at the park playing. Casanova Fly, that's what you go by, right? Uh-huh. He played this record. It was a rock record or something. They said something about, I'm Casanova Fly. It something. said, doom, 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 doom. Doom, 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 Casanova, Casanova. What is that? Casanova. <laughs> and then as the party goes, call me Casanova. What is that? Please tell me what that is. <laughs> it's called Casanova's by Barabbas. By Barabbas. Ah! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm looking, writing that down because I need. You know how long I've been looking for that I'm fucking glad record. You came yeah. in today, man. Yeah. Yo, yeah, I've been looking for that. I'm like, what the fuck is he playing? Because you know yeah. they got the ropes at the part. You can't, you can't see. You can't look at the Toronto. Yeah. See, but but right. that's another thing. And, and when people put people look at you and be like, yeah, well, why? You know why? Why this nigga? You know this and that. Why? Nigga, you why, know why. Why, why what? what? Why what? Like, why is he doing this? Why is, oh. why, is, why are you interviewing Kaz right now? Right, you know right. I mean, why Kaz on Rock the Bells Radio? Why right, Kaz, right, yeah. you know, right. doing this and that? Why him? Now, nigga, he... You know why, nigga. <laughs> I put in work yeah. on right. every level, mm-hmm. every fucking level in this thing. I know everybody right. in right. hip-hop, and everybody know me. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? I can walk in any fucking door and say Grandmaster Cass. I ain't got to say nobody else's name. I ain't got to say name my crew or none of that shit. Mm. I get other niggas in spots that that, nigga, this nigga, 
Facts. You don't know him? That's so and so. Right, right, right. That right. type shit. Yeah, and I it's hard to it. talk. I you earned keep it. Talking shit. Yes, I right. earned it. I keep, right. I, you know, and, and I still, I'm dedicated to my culture, man. I big up the culture more than I big up myself. Right, my wife yeah. will tell you any day, nigga, you don't realize who the fuck you are. Mm. She don't say it like that, but you know, she's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you don't realize who you are. Right. You fucking Grandmaster Cass, you know uh, be on some humble pie shit, you know right. what I mean? Because yeah. I still got piss in my elevator. Yeah. Right. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. Fuck, I'm going to say. Well, you know what I mean? How much better am I than anybody else, nigga? Yeah. I live the same place where everybody else live, you know what I mean? I mm -hmm. walk the same streets, you know what I mean? I, I go I shop in the same stores. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean? now everybody, every now and then I get to... Trip the light fantastic, as they used to say back <laughs> in the day. You know what I mean? I could be in a mansion tomorrow. Right. You know what I mean? I could be in the fucking, but I'll be right back in them pissy elevator, you know what I mean? Right, right after that. So that keeps me humble. Right. Yeah. If you could do anything over in your career, if you can go back and do anything over, what would you, what would you change? I think I would have went to college. <laughs> so you wouldn't have been involved in? Yeah, yeah. I still would have um, been involved in hip hop, but okay. I felt like, um, I, 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 I didn't want to do nothing else when I got involved in hip-hop. Right. Okay? Nothing else was that was as important. Right. You know what I'm saying? School. Mm-hmm. School. What? Yeah. That shit don't challenge me. That shit don't, you know what right. I mean? That's nothing. I come to school to give out flyers. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. That's I'm in everybody else school giving out flyers in the morning, nigga, for my party coming up this weekend. I knew what I wanted to be when I was a kid. Right. 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 And I never veered off it. Right. Yeah. I yeah. never tried to be nothing else but hip hop. Okay. So you not, you didn't have anything else you wanted to be? Nah. Nah. Um I, playing ball, I would have I would have tried to play ball. I mean, now I realized that wouldn't have been viable. I, you know what I mean, because I was nice, but yeah. I wasn't no basketball player. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, right. I'm right. a, I'm a nice in the street, nigga, in the park, this and that, woo woo. But to get on a hardwood floor with niggas that you know train and and do suicides and all that, mm -hmm. right, right. I, I never did all that shit, so yeah. I, I couldn't even say I would have been able to compete right. on that level. So it's a good thing that I chose hip hop. Yeah, you know what I mean. Now you still rhyming to this day. You got a um, a record with Cool G Rap you have coming up. No doubt, no let's doubt. Let's talk about that a little bit and 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 what keeps you you know in the in the booth like and and, and encouraged to keep creating. I mean, I, I spoke to my man Everlast earlier today, and we and I was asking him the same thing, and he was like, "Yo, it just takes me where it takes me." You know what I mean? And, and right now he consi considers himself uh, semi retired. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. And I, I think I feel the same way. I consider myself pretty much semi-retired. I'm out there not actively trying to get no record deal. And, and you know what I mean? And running around trying to find beats and tracks and all that. People yeah. come to me yeah. with that. And I'll be all right, you know, this and that. I'm good because I got so many other things happening, mm -hmm. you know, that keep me viable. As long as it's hip-hop, I don't have to be in a booth. I don't have to be writing or rapping or performing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've been doing hip hop sightseeing tours for eighteen years. Hush, hush, mm. Yeah, you know, eighteen years. Eighteen years. Wow. Um, the the park jams that I do, twenty years. Yeah. Every year I've been doing that for twenty years. So I got a lot of different things that you know I DJ for Cool Mo D. I'm his tour DJ. Oh, you know I mean, I perform with Mo D on the road. So I'm yeah. you know How every you like other you know boom, <laughs> I'm out on the road doing okay. that. You know, I work with organizations. So, you know, with me and Mel is down with the Windows of Hip Hop. Yeah. You know, and um, so so a lot of things keep me active and busy. So writing is something I'm going to never, you know, give up doing. Mm -hmm. But it's not like on a day-to-day -day basis I'm in my house writing rhymes. Right. I, uh -huh. I mean, the opportunity comes about, especially something like um, getting on a song with Cool G Rap. I'm taking that nigga. Yeah. If I never make another wrong, uh, song, yeah, I mean, I'm getting on that track. Right, no I doubt. just want to be able to say that I was on on a track with, with, with one of the greats, right, yeah. and you know, hopefully, he feels the same way. Yeah, right. that's a fact. Is, is there somebody that you've never worked with that you would love to work? with? A lot of people I never work with that I, you know, I would love to work with. You know, um, the bigger artist um, in hip hop, whether from any generation, it seems that there's a system that keeps them away. 
Mm-hmm. from the last generation mm-hmm. or from prior generation. It's mm-hmm. like some unwritten rule that they have or part of the rules of the game. Like, mm-hmm. yo, yo, don't, nah, you can't go back there. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. that's, that's going to taint your shit or whatever, whatever, right. whatever. Everything mm-hmm. is from here forward on. Yeah. So we don't get to intermingle with the next generation of, yeah. of, of big artists. We don't get to be on a platform with them right. yeah. because of that whatever it is, unwritten rule or yeah. whatever. So there's a separation, right. you know, between. I would love to have did a joint with Scarface, mm. right. Ice Cube, right. yeah, I mean, Pac, mm. Big, right. Nas. You Nas, I, mean? I see. I still see Nas happening. I d- well, I, well, Nas did a joint where he had a whole bunch of old school cats get on it. Right. And I, d- I did that. I was on that. So I guess you could say, you know what I mean? I did a... Uh, I did the hook for Ringtone Murder for LL. You know, so I've had a few opportunities, you know right. what I mean? But for the most part, there's there's not nobody. I'm not going to say nobody, but there's not many people that I wouldn't work with. Right. Now, you know, as far as hip hop. One person you gave a lot of credit to was Macklemore. Oh yeah. You worked with him. Yeah. A few years ago. Yeah. And you you kind of criticized hip hop a little bit, but I had to. Yeah. I had to. It's only right because Macklemore, um, of course, white guy, you know, so there's a stigma attached right away. Um, he's not an Eminem, you know, and even Eminem still catch it, you know what I mean, right. for, for for the stigma, for the white boy stigma and all that. But what he did was something that nobody else did. He mm-hmm. reached back and he reached got back. some OGs from the early days of hip hop, okay, yeah. who who considered the 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 – Trinity, the first Trinity of of, of MCs, the, uh-huh. the Three Kings, whatever yeah. you know, which is me, Mel, me, Melly, Melly, Kumo D, yeah. and ain't nobody else did that, yeah. wow. and you could have, and then they tried to say that you know, well, he's he's using us so he can have credibility. This nigga just won two, <laughs> two Grammys the year before. Yeah. Right. This yeah. nigga beat out Kendrick Lamar and somebody else right, for the Grammys the year before. What the fuck do he need us on on his sophomore album for? Not at all. Right. Yeah, you know I mean. And the other thing, and if you want legitimacy, you ain't got to go that far back to fuck with us. Right. 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 You know what I mean? You could have got Jada Kiss, nigga. Man, so, right, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. So, so I rejected the way that they was trying to make him look, and I've never had a more successful record than that than that one. Mm. Wow. I've never been a part of a record more s- successful than wow. that. Yeah, I've never se- received as much money wow. from a record wow. as that. Shoot. I've shout never received love, a platinum plaque from another record like that. Yeah. I've never received a, a, a European MTV award, mm. okay, <laughs> because of that. Because of that. So... Mm. Macklemore, Macklemore. Macklemore. Macklemore, it's all man. good. Yeah, we need in more my like book, need more and, like and, you. and one thing that people don't realize is that Macklemore was grinding a long time, long way time before, before long he time. reached. You know what I mean? Seattle. And people look Seattle, at it yeah. like you know, you know, you know, this dude just come out of nowhere. Now this nigga do graffiti, man. Yeah, right. he's yeah. a hip hop dude. Yeah, right. he just happened yeah. to be white and from Seattle. Yeah, right. facts, facts. Um, what do you think about hip hop now? Like, how do you feel about it? Um, um. The new era, you know, where we are. I feel the same way about hip hop as I always have. You know, I walk around with this shit on my back. You know what I mean? What's going on today, I don't consider hip hop. I think it's a derivative of the original culture of hip hop, but I don't think it's the culture. It can't, it doesn't represent the mm-hmm. culture at all. Um, it represents this generation's um, version mm-hmm. of one of the elements. Rap of our culture, which is rap, rap. kind of rap. Yeah, which is the rap element. Right. I mean, I don't see no niggas out here break dancing. Mm, right. Not okay. here. Now, if you look, I at don't other... see these young cats out here, you know, doing graph or painting murals. Right. You know, or none of that. I don't see them on the ones and two turntablists or nothing. That. Oh, you see a bunch of niggas people. rhyming. It's it's people all over the place doing the other elements. It just doesn't seem to be us. It's us. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and when you're talking about the culture. Um, uh, you, you're talking about today, and, and you're talking about the newer artists and the newer uh-huh. music, and that's what I see. It's not what I see; it's what I don't see. What, what you see right. is obvious. You know, yeah. the drill music, the whatever, the trap music, whatever kind of music, whatever variation of it that they're calling it. That's their own thing. That you know what I mean. But it, but it's detached from the rest of the culture. Yeah. 
of hip hop. Yeah, you yeah. see no semblance yeah. of the of the culture in today's music. Facts. So there's some of the music I can appreciate. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's different. It, it might not be boom bap or whatever, but it has its place. A lot of the messages and all that shoot 'em up shit and I'm a fuck your broad and that bitch ain't this and that now. She sucked my dick. Nigga, that's my niece you talking about. That's mm-hmm. my granddaughter. When I hear that now <laughs> I, mean, mm-hmm. I hear it with a different set of ears. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel you. you know I, I mean, you. what right. you gonna pass my granddaughter around to your mans and them, and then yes. do this and this and that, motherfucker? I feel That's you. That's how I take that. Yeah. So I, I don't you have the same appreciation, you know, mm-hmm. for the lyrics and shit. No, nah, no, nah, I feel you. Now, um, this might be a hard question to ask or answer, but I'm gonna ask it because we ask everybody this. But you have a different perspective. As the grandmaster, you are your top five dead or alive. I don't do that. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't do that. If you listen to my show, me and Shot Rock talk about that shit every other oh, day. Man. We do not do that. It does an injustice to to whatever the list is about because yeah. there's way more than five people. Yes, that that you know that you have to consider when you try to narrow something down to five people. If you say basketball players, right. if you say football players, if you say nigga, there's so many great motherfuckers that's there, and and it, and it's all a matter of perception. Mm-hmm. It's a matter of perception. Well, what do you say to I, I that? Got, what do you say I, I, to I, I, that? This is what I said to that. This is to um, who I prefer, Big L, Biggie. Oh, who I prefer, Big L or Biggie? Big L or Biggie? Big L. Oh, Nas or Jay Z. I have to go. I have to go, Jay Z. MOP or Onyx? MOP. I'm scared. I'm more scared of them than I am of Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> when Slam come on, I, I just back up and watch niggas go uh, at it. But yeah. when but when Annie up come on, I leave. Right? <laughs> it's a different vibe. Okay. okay. Uh, Yo, the Nas Jay Z was it was really hard for me, man. It was. I swear, it was really hard for me. You know what I mean? Because Nas is more serious. I like my Nas more serious, but right. I like Jay Z's cleverness. Right. This nigga just so clever. He clicks on the things. Right. That, you know what I mean? He's like, oh shit, did you hear that? And a little nuances in the shit he be saying. You know what I mean? But right, right, right. Right. who else you got? Who else you got? Come on, let's go, let's go. Big Daddy Kane, a Karis one. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Why you ain't see Rock Kim? Huh? Okay. Ooh. All right, all right. I gotta go, Big Daddy Kane. You gotta go, Big Daddy Kane, because of his style. Yeah, because of his style. He's he's more like me. He's right. more in the mold of me. Right. Yeah, he patterns yeah. himself he patterns behind himself. me. That's tough. Right. You so, know, and, right. and 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 you know, Shout and a King, couple of other people. Right. So yeah. I, I gotta go with you with, with the guy who looks up to me. And he checks. He name checks you all the time. All right. Yeah, man. Cold Crusher, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know them fantastic you guys. Know, what, about, good. what about what about them dudes? Are pretty good. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Have, of course, right. Cold Crush. I need to find a worthy opponent to battle Rock Him. Who you got? Who I don't. I don't. I, I couldn't tell you. you couldn't tell I me. couldn't tell you. you um, tell a worthy opponent who, to battle Rock Him. Who, who you got? Uh, 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 um, I got it. But go who, ahead. Who you got? Cool G Rap. Cool G Rap. Of course. But but go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Who'd you rap? Yeah. Lyrics of Fury Lyrics or of Men Fury. at Work? Which, ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Lyrics of Fury or Men at Work? work. Ooh, let's go. Work. I got Men at Work. Oh, oh, oh see, now, I told you I don't like doing this. <laughs> let's Shady, go. Shady, Shady, you got you. Shady, you into this shit, man. Let's go. Men at Work. Men at Work. Ooh. Men at Work. Lyrics of Fury is hard, though. I don't know. I love Men at Work. It is. It is. But, yeah, yeah, I, um... I'm an ambassador to the culture. <laughs> all right, all right. And, Shout out and to everybody. Even even being you know on the radio now, and sometimes like stories come across and this and that, and I'm like, really, my nigga? Yeah. I, but but I can't, you know what I mean? Because what I have you mean? to be Wait a somewhat. Clarify, clarify. I mean, you saying people embellishing or yeah, or, or, or stories that I don't think is really relevant, okay. you know, as far as you know, hip hop is concerned. Yeah. But, you know, you got to kind of 
be pliable. You got to bend a little something, yeah. something. But the stories that I really feel, you can tell. You can hear the passion in my voice. You right. know, even with, with with me and Shy, if just a story comes across the desk, are we talking about something that's relatable to us that we know? Oh, okay, you can hear. Yeah, and this and this and that. You know, there's more commentary involved as opposed to things that's just there that you got to speak about. Yeah, right. And like, like hip-hop today, it's like you, you can't... You, you can't like dismiss it. Mm-hmm. You can't dismiss the power and the numbers mm-hmm. right. that these young cats are doing out here. Now you can't Crazy. dismiss Cardi B and Megan St- Megan Thee Stallion. You know what right. I mean? And, mm-hmm. I mean, we, they doing diamond numbers. Yeah. Cardi B is doing diamond numbers. She do she's selling more records than like. Mm-hmm. I mean any right. I mean, any established like artist mm-hmm. yeah. from back in the day Whitney like all of them Marashi passing all of them right. and mm-hmm. sound you know what I mean so yeah I, I, I mean you just can't dismiss it got it you ain't gotta like it mm-hmm. right. you ain't gotta understand it okay but you gotta respect it right it well, is what it is right real quick Hip hop movies. You guys were in Wild Style, obviously. I always wanted to know why, or did you not? Have, did you did you want to be in um, B Street, or you never got a chance? Or wh- why was you, why was Cold Crush not in B Street? First of all, Wild Style. We uh, they came to us. Okay. Um, as far as doing Wild Style, uh, once B Street was coming out, B Street was a Hollywood production. Okay. They got a budget and all that, and this and that, and uh, they wanted us to audition. Right. For B what? Street. Right. Okay. Got you. He's like, get the fuck out of here. Right, right, right. You, first of all, you you coming to make a movie about something I do, mm. and you want me to audition <laughs> for it. Right, right. Yo, you right. stupid. Right. And then and then probably, our, you know, our, our record company probably has something to do with us, you know, not being in it as well because they probably wanted too much out of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Or whatever, mm-hmm. okay. and for, for them it was the politics. For us, it was like that audition shit. We ain't audition for shit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Kaz, we we gotta wrap up, man. I mean, we gotta you 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 gotta promise to come back again, man. Oh, for you sure. I mean? You you gotta we, come uptown though. Yeah, uh, uptown. That's baby. What I'm saying. Uptown, come on, baby. man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. You know nah, what I mean? Nah, love but is love. On, real, on, on like, a good day, we yo, here, man, baby. We salute you, bro. And uh, we, we respect you so much, man. That's why I had to have DJ Thorough come through. Shout out to Slops, the normal co-host of the podcast. Slit Ops. Yeah. Um, you had to you, sit this one out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, shoot, I <laughs> damn near had to sit this one out, man. <laughs> like, I was like, yo, let's bring Thorough in. But um, you got any final words, anything else you want to tell people? Like, give these young people maybe maybe some wisdom? I mean, I, I can show you better than I can tell you. Yeah, facts. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you look at a lot of the elders or pioneers, OGs, whatever you want to call them, and you look at what they're doing, you you know, and it's like, it. you're not inspired by it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not not that they're doing anything wrong, but nothing inspirational. Yeah. Uh, me, I'm constantly out here hitting them bricks. I'm out here, I'm visible, I'm viable, I'm doing things, I'm in a community, I'm, I'm, I'm making music, I'm, I'm doing interviews with allhiphop.com, yeah. I'm on the radio, I'm on the TV with the origins of hip-hop, I yeah. got a podcast over there, so it, there's no way that... Um, you, you you can't see my hustle and you can't see, you know, my, my involvement in the culture. And that, I think, is the best thing that I could do it, it, yeah. besides telling you something. Right. It's showing you, you know what I mean, that at 62, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, mm-hmm. with no major hit records, you know what I mean. I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't have no Grammys or none of that shit. You know what I mean? But I love what the fuck I do and I stay dedicated to it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and me still being here is just a testament to that. And everybody that rode with me that still recognizes me, that's like, you know, it shows me that love. It shows me that respect mm-hmm. when I walk down the street, you know what I mean? That makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. I mean. well, salute. 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 Thank you. Grand yeah. Master all right. Love is love, baby. Yes, sir. Right on time. <laughs>